Hi, Carl with you, and we're still continuing our topic on medicinal plants and herbs. Um, last time I spoke with Melanie and from the border market area while I was in Guyana, and I did also decide to look at the Amerindian, the indigenous peoples. Now, if all of these people are using herbs and medicinal treatments, why, why is it not good? I can tell you, I think it does good for me, because I do use some of them, and I will not stop. So, here I have someone... Uh, from the indigenous tribes of the Amerindian to tell you, she's a Tushaw actually, to tell you more about their medicinal plants and how good they are and what it is used for. First of all, I would like to say that we are representing the Mainstay Wayaka women's group and what is happening in there. We are trying to highlight or to educate, share our knowledge with the public about herbal remedies. Now, as indigenous peoples, we believe that there is an answer in the forest for every sickness and every disease. I just wish to say that as a child, we grew up knowing these things and talking to our great-grandparents. They've shared their knowledge and skills with us. Um, I would like now to show you some of the things that we have on display here. And here we have the locust bark. Now, this is good for back pain and diabetes. It also make a wonderful tea. A lot of people know about the locust bark, but it has medicinal properties within it. Now, you have to be careful going in the jungle, cutting or picking stuff. The first thing we learn when you're out there in the forest, things that are edible, wild fruits, as long as the birds or the monkeys eat them, it's good. You have to be careful also when you're cutting the barks and whatever because uh, while we have some very good things medicinal, of medicinal value, we also have poisonous stuff out there in the jungle. So I would like to show you now what we have here. Something looking like cassava. It is not cassava. We call it carrier and it's the root of a vine. So here we have it's excellent for headache. We also use it to make a poultice if you have an abscess. And it is also good for dandruff. We apply it to our hair. Um, right now I would like to say I don't have dandruff. I don't use head and shoulder. <laughs> I use natural stuff. So this is excellent. We have here what we call the black yari yari. Now, you would know that we live so far, far in the forest. The nearest, nearest hospital is always miles away. We have to find a way. Now, this black yari yari, if you happen to encounter with a snake and you're bitten by a snake, this is what we use. We scrape the inner bark and we give the patient to chew until you reach, seek medical attention. So, as I said before, many answers. Yeah. What would the, how, what would the, the yari yari do? Would it sort of like sustain the poison from working yeah, it, through the system? Yes, it is very bitter. So while we give you the inner bark, we scrape it and give you to chew, you swallow the juice. You spit out the, the bark itself, right, but you just swallow the juice. That would help to fight whatever is inside of you until we seek medical attention. In some cases, people have, we have other remedies too, and some people don't even seek medical attention. But we try to do something until we can reach the hospital or wherever. Yeah. We have here what is called a one semi. Now this is an eye drop. For red eyes, for sore eyes, this is what we grew up knowing. This is what we used to use before we heard about murin tears and all these fancy eye drop now. This is our remedy. We would scrape it, we'd wash it first thoroughly, get it cleaned up nicely, scrape the outer skin off, then use the inner core, place it in a clean cloth and drop the juice in your eyes. Excellent for sore eyes. Now, here we have something looking like a book. Well, this used to be our tobacco skin. We call it the weenus skin. We used to roll our tobacco in this. The old people would take the tobacco that we would normally grow, roll it in this weenus skin and have a good smoke. Now, apart from enjoying a good smoke, it's also used in our rituals, in our ceremonies. We use it, we believe, in our ceremony, when we're healing the sick, we use that wina. Yes. Here we have some bitters. 
blood purifier, sand bitters. Now people suffering with diabetes, we advise them to drink this also. It also purify the blood and give you a clean, nice looking, healthy looking skin. It's very bitter. Yes, we have here also what we call the quashi bitters or the stick bitters. This can be soaked in wine or water. Yes, it can be put in wine and you have a good flavor and you take it daily for at least seven days and you stop. Then the next week or so you can go again. You drink it in small quantities, not large portion. Now here is table number two. A lot of people are interested in what we have here for display. Now here we have the famous Capadula. A lot of people heard about the Capadula. This is what it looks like. We call it a rope because it climbs on a tree. Yeah, so the Capadula rope we would call it. Now what does the Capadula do? The Capadula has a repetition of... Being an aphrodisiac. Yes, right, a power. <laughs> so what it does, it, um, it enhances, it really right, and enhances sexual activities yeah. and whatever, okay? We also have the Devil Duo, and listen yeah. to the name. Okay. Yes, and m yes, men would use the Devil Duo, okay. right. And, um, well, how do you differentiate the difference between... Yes, if Yes, there are, there are differences. Now, in the forest, when you, the leaves are different. Yeah. How they grow, they, they, the texture of the skin, the color, you have to be able to identify. There are differences in everything. And here we have the sarsaparilla. Now, this is a yam-like thing. It's the root of a vine. So we would dig. And if we break it, it's purple in color. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I love it. That's right, so process. it makes a good tea, it has medicinal values, and uh, now the, the other thing, we, you can combine them. You can boil the sarsaparilla with the capadula. Wow. Yes, a right, a, a good taste and a good action. <laughs> and here we have the another, coction. yes, the coction, and the, the joke is the coction puts you back in action. <laughs> so, you know. The, especially men are very interested in yeah. these things. But okay. what we learned, yes, it works. Yeah. We've but, had a lot of feedback, but it works. Baskets here, huh? No, yes. Now here we have our herbal baskets. Okay. Yes, this is our herbal basket. In this basket we have some coction, yeah. sorry, some sarsaparilla and capadula. Mm. Yes, this we have. In some other basket, in this one here, we have the lemongrass, the sweet broom, capadula and daisy. So you can get one of these little baskets and go home and prepare your brew, yeah. And um, we tell you in the basket, it's labeled, tell you how to use it, how much water to add, and if you need to add sugar or you can drink it, you know, however. So there are some directions. Here we have the granny backbone. And now if you look at the granny backbone, it's flat, it's different from the old man's back over there. So everything has a distinct difference. What now the, the granny backbone, as we say here, it's good for diabetes also, okay. yes. And skin rashes, it helps you to keep your skin clean if you're suffering from skin rashes. Also it enhances sexual activities combined with other, okay. right, okay. We also have here what we call the Bortata Cobia. Now this again, it's an eye wash or an eye drop but you have to get it fresh from the forest. When you cut it, it gives a very clear liquid, very, very clear. You can drink it and you can also pour it into the eyes. It gets your eyes nice and clear. Yeah. <clears throat> now over here, we talked about those um, with medicinal value that you can drink, you can boil, whatever. We talk about some of the poisonous stuff. Now, the incredible thing of this hiery, as we call it, is that this is what we use for doping of fish. Now, as indigenous people, what we do, what we used to do, I would want to say, because we try to discourage this practice now, because we would beat this up, crush it up, and wash it in the creek. And within a couple of minutes, the fishes would start to come up. We would then take our baskets and catch the fish. Now, mind you, this has some poisonous thing inside. 
if I drink the juice, I will die. But then I'll wash it in the creek and I'll catch the fish and I'm alive up to today and I've eaten that fish a lot of times. But the, uh, why we did try to discourage this now is because the little fingerlings, most cases the little fingerlings will die because they're small. So we're not into this practice so much nowadays. We're trying to cut it out. But here, this is what we used to do. So we still, you know, would like people to know what was our practices and what we're doing. This is another, um, what we call the money leaf. This also is poisonous. Yeah. What is that used for? This is also used for doping of the fish. Okay. Yeah. Now here we have an incense. This is a natural incense from the Hiawa tree. This is the incense that we use in our rituals, in our healing ceremonies. We believe that the highway incense chases away the evil spirits so that the good angels and whatever can come. And it also has healing powers. So this is what we have, natural incense. Even churches use our incense. What we have here too is what we call the kariman. It's made from the latex of the mani tree with some wax from the honey beehive. We combine them and we make this helps. We use this in our ceremonies. We also use this to rub on the string that we would tie our bows and arrows. It helps it to uh, be stronger. Yes. Now what we have here, we have the root of the buru buru tree and we drink it for malaria. Now malaria is a problem in many of our villages. And so we must have various remedies or things that we can do until we can have medical attention. Now the buru buru combined with the white cedar. This is what we have here, the white cedar. We would peel the bark with the buru buru. Add one lemon, boil it down. The very, we would use like about two liters of water and we boil it down probably to half a liter. So it's very strong. And then we would give our patient and it's for malaria. Yeah. <clears throat> now we have here something that we call the moko moko. As you hear, it's used as a, a dressing for a cut. Now this acts as a disinfectant, it acts as antibiotics because if we accidentally get cut and we apply the moko moko juice and then a plaster the next day it's as if we stitch that cut back yes yeah, so the moko moko is excellent these are natural remedies and if you look at this plant here it's look, it looks like a foreign some people might think it's an ornament it looks ornamental but it has great value now we call it the wild moran and it's used to clean cuts and sores yeah, if you have itches also on your skin, all you have to do is get some fresh leaves, rub it together in the palm of your hands, and apply it to the area. It's very bitter, it's good for itches, cuts, sores, it works. We have here the Eurobali, or the wild tobacco as it is known also. This we use to boil with the cedar bark, with the buru buru root for malaria. Yeah. Yes, for malaria. And is it really completely? Yeah, uh -huh. yes, it's good, it? yeah. So while it's, it's, it can be used for internal use and external, yes, also. So it, it's very valuable. We have here, this, this one here, and it's the Ayawati, we call it. Now, chicken pox or pox, any sort of pox. We get a good bunch, we boil it, and we bathe the patient. It's excellent. Yes, it even helps to remove the marks from your skin. So if you have pox, we, uh, we bathe you with this, right? Here we have now a plant that a lot of people take it for ornamental plant. Yes, it's a wonderful ornament because we have one in the bucket there with beautiful flowers. We call it, yeah, that is a little dying, the flowers that is. Um, we call it the golden shower, which is a grown orchid but then it has medicinal value also. This is a very small plant, so it hasn't given the shoot as yet, but it normally would give a shoot which we cut and we take the inner part, we scrape it and apply it to our skin if you have an abscess. Yes, 
we apply it and it's very good very very good so while it's a beautiful ornament it also has medicinal values right? over here <coughs> oh boy Now what we have here, we have the elephant lily. This again looks like an ornamental plant or some people would have it for ornament. But here the root of the elephant lily is excellent for stomach coal or we say chest coal. We will boil it, grate it first, get it cleaned up nicely, grate it, add some sugar and make a syrup. Right, so that's, that's it. And we give the patient. Over here we have the baboon tail. This is known as the baboon tail. If you look at it, it looks like a baboon tail, the root. So we take the root of the baboon tail, we grate it and mix it with what we have here now. We call it the alligator tail. So these are all the tails here. <clears throat> See, it's long, it's just like an alligator tail. Now we combine the two together with the grated baboon tail and we boil them and we make a syrup and for whooping cough. Right, so this, these are how some of our remedies. We have here what we call the wild sumutu. Now this little fruit here is edible. You can eat it, it's sweet, this little fruit here. But we boil this and we make a syrup, or it can be, why we make a syrup? Because it tastes a little bad. So if we add a little sugar, we make a syrup. And we give it for worms, it's excellent for worm. We use it as a worm syrup, deworming our children. Here we have now what we call the black pepper, or the wild black pepper, and this is what women use. Now if, you know, our beliefs, <clears throat> and it's a way to, it's like a so antibiotic. When so when they have all um, uterus problems. Yes, problems. right, right, that is exactly what we menstrual use. Problems. Right, menstrual problem, and after, you know, you just had your baby and stuff yes. like that, you drink and you, so we believe in these things, and we drink them and, and it works. Yes, they do help. So here we have um, what we call the munari dang. It's very smelly. It doesn't have a pleasant smell, but if you, you have a fever, we would boil the munari dang, we would boil the fever grass, some wild maran, some yerbali, and we give you a bath, a hot bath, to help to get rid of the fever. Also, the smell of the munari dang, we believe, that evil spirit don't like that smell. Right. So we, we would have it around, you know. Mm -hmm. So these are some of our herbal medicines. No, I have one final question. Please, Very yeah. technical. Oh, go ahead. All these medicinal plants, mm -hmm. they've got their healing properties. Yes. And they seem to have all been very powerful. Mm -hmm. Have they not found one mm -hmm. for HIV? Well, we hope it is our belief that there is something out there. As I said before in my opening statement, the forests have an answer. Yes, to every sickness, every disease. There is an answer out there, but we have to be able to identify. We have to do some research. And we've been, you know, um, I would like to say AIDS is new to us. Okay, it wasn't there many years ago. So we have to do some studies to what is the, what we have suspected, I would want to say, or we believe, which I wouldn't want to say on camera. Nope. No, what is it? But we believe there is an answer. And even right here, we were told there. that it's there. And um, there are things are wrong, but we, there studies has to be done, research and before we come up. But, we know out Your there, answers. yes, their answer. Because I wish to say, as an indigenous person, Makanaima, our great spirit, yes. has the answer to everything. And it is out there. But we have to be able to identify right. it. Yes. 